In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for another beautiful day. Not everything is a gift from you. This beautiful day, this breath of life, everything is your providence. Holy Spirit, take complete authority of this entire session. Take complete authority of my mind and my vocal cords. You think through my mind. You speak through my mouth. Let every word that is spoken over here pierce the hearts of those who are listening. And I take authority over every spirit of distraction, disturbance, and unbelief that has come to steal, kill, and destroy. In the name of Jesus, I command you, leave this place right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for I know and I know that you are going to confirm every word spoken over here with accompanying signs, wonders, and testimonies. We make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Okay. Does anyone want to share any testimony? Anyone? Before we begin? Praise God. Praise everyone. Yes, sister, go ahead. Um, this this morning, <clears throat> after, after, after communion, I was sitting and I said, Lord, I just want to know. Uh, you know, I was just silent and God was speaking to me. Jesus was saying to me, uh, you know, you, you know, be calm when you, anything worries you, be calm. And I was listening. Then uh, a thought came to me. I said, Lord, how do I push away thoughts sometimes? You know, th thoughts of all those hurts, suddenly they come. So Jesus said, just say, Jesus, I love you. The minute you say, Jesus, I love you, the evil has to leave because you're glorifying me at that time and you're confessing that you love. And then I remembered, I used to say these words when I was small, you know, when I received a study communion. Uh, the nun taught us to say, Jesus, I love you, help me to save souls. And I was saying it, like, you know, till uh, such time <clears throat> after we finished schooling and all, then a lot of distractions. So that reminded me that how beautiful my life was when I was a baby, when I was young, from the time I received communion till, like, you know, mm. finished school. Just all those school days were beautiful. So I said, Lord, I want to go back to those beautiful days, innocent holy, obedient to every word, fear I had of you, reverence I had. So the Lord said, you have not changed, you're the same. I still know that you're good. Many things have come and gone in your way, but you still love me. But I want you to confess it loud and clear. Jesus, I love you. And I say that now more than ever, because I used to always say, thank you, Jesus. Now I have to say, Jesus, I love you. Thank you, Jesus. Two sentences more. Praise and glorify God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. So, uh, thank you, sister, for sharing that testimony. You know, as I was listening to that testimony, I just uh, was pondering on this. You know, as children, when we were small, okay, if you have noticed children, they are just, you know, so, uh, what to say, innocent, so forgiving. A child does not, uh, you know, remember things. A child gets angry, they fight. But after some time, they become friends again. And that's why Jesus said, the kingdom of God belongs to a child. Why did he say that? Because a child has no selfish motives. A child's heart is innocent. A child's heart is pure. The child looks out for the best 
if you see okay when you are small okay if you notice a child a child doesn't have an understanding of you know this person or that person the child smiles at everything the tree the birds everything children have no fear that is the first thing they'll go and they will play with anybody they will go and smile at anybody but as we start growing up what happens we receive the knowledge of the world and that knowledge that we receive from the world as it we start you know receiving it it is taking us in a different direction and it is taking us in the direction of this world that we are not able to you know discern what is the will of god thank you jesus thank you jesus so to romans chapter 12 was two onwards Can someone read this? <coughs> And do not be confirmed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind. focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourself what the will of god is that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you praise god so this scripture saying and do not be conformed to this world that means do not go in the direction of this world conform means to take the shape if you have seen water you know water if you pour it in a container it takes the shape of a container any water or liquid correct in the same way our minds to every minute is getting conformed either in the direction of the world or in the direction of the word it depends on which direction are we going we are allowing our minds to go because as you know the decision the ability to make decisions and choose everything is in my soul mind it's not in my spirit if i have a strong spirit that strong spirit can you know uh like govern the soul and you know influence the soul to make godly decisions according to the word of god but if my mind is governed by the things of this world the knowledge of this world that knowledge of this world can take me in an opposite direction and that's why the scripture says do not be conformed to this world but be transformed and progressively changed which means what transformation is not speaking about change in your appearance transformation is speaking about change in your thinking and as you are changing your thinking by the renewing of your mind that is focusing on godly values and ethical attitude in other words renewing of your mind means i am meditating on god's word okay and every day i have to do that because if i don't do that the knowledge that i'm receiving from the world okay will take me in an opposite direction because as sister marcela was saying in the beginning when we were children things were a lot more easier it was easy to forget easy to 
you know not keep things to heart everything was so easy but as we start growing up what happens the knowledge we receive starts influencing us experiences in the world start ex- influencing us and many a times it takes us in a direction which is very ungodly it happens with every person and that's why the key is renewing your mind when you make a decision to meditate on the word every day okay that's where you know you are getting conformed to the word of god your thinking aligns with the word of god and then your decisions will be godly because of that what happens so that you may prove what the will of god is that means i can only discern i can only know the will of god for my life when i'm spiritually minded when i have a renewed mind not when i'm carnally minded because carnal mind means i'm operating to my five natural senses but spiritually minded means i'm operating according to the word of god and the will of god which is good which is acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for me i can discern the will of god for my life not when i'm carnally minded i can only discern the will of god when i am spiritually minded when my eyes are fixed on what god wants me to do praise god praise god thank you is god right i'll give you an example to understand this better now when jesus came he he constantly spoke about kingdom correct yes yes and when he spoke about kingdom what were his disciples thinking now they will get power sorry now they will get power because jesus is there with them yeah they were imagining a physical kingdom they were thinking he'll become a king yeah. he has come to um, defeat the romans yes. he's come to rescue israelites he will be the uh, you know he will be the king and they all will get power and he will rule over this earth that was their thinking was that thinking according to the word or no. was the carnal no. minded no 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 <laughs> they were carnally minded right that's why they misunderstood what jesus said and that is why when when the word is being shared and say a person is operating through the flesh and not the spirit and say for example okay a person is you know uh, going through some hurt feelings okay and this gospel that is being preached is about forgiveness or is about you know overcoming offense and that person is still on emotions that person is still in the flesh will that person be able to accept it so easily no 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 because when the gospel is preached the truth is revealed and that truth sets us free that truth is what you know uh, it compels us to make corrections in our life so that we can see you know the will of god we can see the goodness of god in our life but when a person is thinking through the flesh we know that in romans 8:6 to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace so when i'm thinking through the flesh okay then i will not see things the way it is i will try to see things through my own understanding the way the disciples were seeing things in many things jesus would test them he would explain everything to them 
but in spite of seeing so many mir miracles they were still doubting they were still having unbelief if you remember when he went to feed the 5000 with the five loaves and two fish okay and the disciples uh, saw that after that he told them to go in the uh to cross the uh, shore and go to the other side but they did not consider the miracle they did not consider his words they considered the storm that came in between while they were crossed that's where he had to rebuke them and say you of little faith why do you doubt yes because many a times we are more focused on what is happening around us than what is written in the word that is why when we are sensitive to things around us our heart becomes hardened to the word of god and it is a very very slow process and that's why every day only with while spending time in the word praying in tongues doing things consistently will we be able to discern god's will for our life thank you jesus would anybody like to add something here i i thought of a small testimony yes sister go ahead uh, two days back yesterday was my grandson's 10th birthday and just a day before that um, uh, The, you know he's got a younger brother a little 6 years old who so they have the playing time different like when his class goes out to play his uh, sibling the younger boy he goes out to play the other time so uh, my grandson uh, when he went out to play he saw that his cousin that is my my daughter's brother in law daughter she was in tears why because she didn't have a cap and there's a rule you can't go out to play without your cap on so you know he he ran to his brother's classroom and asked the teacher for permission to speak to his sibling and he asked him for the cap he gave willingly he gave because knowing it for his cousin he gave and uh, he came and gave it to his cousin my grandson gave it to his cousin and she was happy and she came to play and he told the mother at home she told my daughter my daughter was saying mama look how you know he used his brains to go and get the cap and all and it came to my mind to tell her no it is not only in his brain but you know his heart was moved to compassion you have to look at that area he was so compassionate he could you see her standing there with tears in her eyes her and then my daughter understood yeah they are like you know they are all out for others i said that's exactly you know it comes from home like when they look at us we are good we are compassionate we go out to reach that's exactly how they follow i said they could they be could be children of his age also could who could be selfish not bothers maybe whoever so that's like you know i also was happy i got an opportunity to bring it to her notice and teach her how things move god looks at a heart i said more than we don't say that like they are smart or they are he used his brains and all that all come from god but the condition of the heart so you know this is a little testimony which i want to give like a child like you were just talking about child how innocent but how do you know because the spirit in them makes them do the good things in life praise god thank you jesus praise god absolutely because um, why jesus said you know going becoming like a child to enter the kingdom of god because a child is completely dependent on god if a child's nature is completely dependent on on uh, you know their parents if their parents say something they don't doubt their parents they hold their parents hands and they walk wherever with the parent is going because of that trust when i have that trust on my god knowing that whatever no matter whatever i see i know that god's plans for my life are always the best that is where i'm operating through faith and not by sight yeah. thank you jesus thank you praise jesus. god so we were talking about discerning god's will for our life 
so discerning god's will for our life is only when my mind is renewed because think about it okay when i just give you the example of the kingdom the disciples also imagined a physical kingdom with the riches and all those things okay but they did not understand this kingdom that jesus was speaking about was you know a kingdom that is within us and today we don't have to go in search of the kingdom of god the kingdom of god is within us because the holy spirit dwells inside of us he's teaching us everything and that is why you know everything that we are studying in scriptures it is speaking to us it is becoming more and more meaningful to us yes. praise god praise god thank you jesus so <clears throat> every time anything any decisions of my life it might look good in the physical but is it really god's will for me or does god want me to go to other places wherever i see in the bible okay and i see the men and women of god they trusted god they did not ask questions okay where we are going where what we are doing all those things nothing they asked they had complete trust in god and because they had complete trust in god they could go forward relying on him depending on him can i put myself in a place where you know i say lord i am ready to follow you no matter what it takes i don't know what is going to happen around me but i am ready to keep my focus on you that only comes when we renew our mind with the word and when i'm renewing my mind the more i realize that i understand the nature of god who god truly is and as i'm doing that my relationship with the lord strengthens and this relationship with the father will take me to places i've never been this relationship will make me do the things i never thought i would do in my life mm. praise god praise god thank you jesus thank you anyone wants to say something yes sister praise jesus praise jesus brother uh yes the scripture the romans uh, 12 2 which we learned today uh, yeah it's very very important and uh, it has uh, really really helped me uh, especially when it comes to the renewing of the mind and uh, the scripture is very very clearly it speaks very clearly very loudly and uh, it says that do not be conformed to the world but be you transformed by the renewing of the mind of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of god now the scripture is telling us it is very clearly telling us do not take the shape of the world do not think as the world thinks it says do not behave as the world behaves now now that you are born again now that you have accepted god as your lord god and savior now that you know the truth renew your mind change your thinking accept exchange your thoughts for god thoughts exchange your ideas for god's ideas exchange your thoughts <clears throat> take up the promises of god and when you do that what i am doing i am renewing my mind and renewing of the mind has you clear said that yes the renewing of the mind is a daily process it's not one time when i do the renewing of my mind <clears throat> that is the time when i am not conform to this world and renewing of the mind has to be my lifestyle like uh, this scripture really helped me because uh, i work in an office uh, where is very very challenging 
and uh, some of the tasks uh, which are given uh, like you know are so difficult but uh, we know when uh, i can do all things in christ who strengthens me but if i don't renew my mind and i don't know who is inside me i cannot do that task so first i have to renew my task and i have to believe that i can do that particular task so until unless i renew my mind i cannot do that task i may have everything de deposited in the inside of me i have may have the resurrection power of jesus in the inside of me i may have the holy spirit in the inside of me but if i still don't renew my mind i will still live a defeated life and uh, that was uh, with me so this scripture has really really helped me a lot praise jesus praise jesus thank you brother for sharing this and that's why every day i have to you know i have to be consistent in doing yes. what i'm doing if i'm not consistent in doing in following the word of god in renewing my mind that is where i will again slip back to the same old thing yes. the same old okay. lifestyle and that's why we have to every day meditate on god's word we have to labor for we don't have to labor to get anything from god god has already given everything to us the supernatural life he has given it to us but we yes. have to labor for that word to enter us so that word changes the way we see things and now we start seeing things the way god sees it like really i i can say that you know after meditating on god's word the way my life has been it has been so effortless i can say in the sense before i came in the word of god i would be so much involved in my you know in related to my academics and all but now after coming in the word i can say you know things have become so effortless like what i would yes. normally how much time i would take to spend in the studies i feel i finish it faster because of the word of god and that remaining time i can use it for the word yes so very true sister spending time in the word of god uh, is very very important and most of the time uh, we do complain that uh, we don't have time we are very busy well uh, <clears throat> when i say i don't have time for the word of god or when i'm not spending time in the word of god i am uh, only saying that uh, i am not giving importance you know to the word of god i have not made the word of god my priority you know to spending time in the word of god yes uh, <clears throat> i really remember my days about two years back when i came into the word you know when we especially all of us when we first came into the word of god there was a lot there was a lot of zeal you know and there was uh, uh, that uh, that hunger and that thirst uh, the, i still remember i used to go from office i used to reach home 6:30 and uh, before i used to listen to we used to watch them youtubes and i used to spend a lot of time watching wrestling but uh, i still remember two years back when i started um, i used to just go take my shower uh, I, like my family is back home uh, they come here on the visit and they go back so i had to do the cooking and all but uh, initially what i did when i came in the world uh, i had so much hunger for the world so i used to just come from office keep my bag there and sit with my books with my notes uh, i should listen to the teachings and sometimes you know i wouldn't even see the time it used to go up to 2 o'clock in the morning and 3 o'clock in the morning there were times even you know uh, my wife is to wonder why i have not called her you know and i'm saying are it's already 2 o'clock or 1 o'clock you know but uh, yeah being consistent is very very important but what happens over a period of time you know we grow a little you know <clears throat> we uh, once the zeal is there at the starting but the word of god says that uh, we have to keep the same diligence you know yes. it has to be consistent you know very spendy so spending time uh, yes renewing of the mind is very 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 important praise jesus praise jesus absolutely brother because there are so many things so much of information that we are receiving from the world and you know if that enters us with if i am not laboring to you know 
spend time in the word that same information can take me in an opposite direction in Very other true. words conform to the world yes praise god praise god i think um, brother j had uh, raised his hand can you please unmute Yes. Good morning. Um, it's actually Jane. Uh, a lady actually. Uh, so uh, while responding to his questions, I noticed that you had made mention of um you constantly meditation, um on the Word of God, and I just wondered if it's okay if you would be willing to explain your approach to meditation, like your practical approach, um. So, regardless of like sitting down in a still um states maybe like during your day how do you go about meditation um in order to remember the word um okay. for common life as well okay i'll give you an example sister do you uh you know cook oh yes i cook okay suppose an example okay when you received a bad news about something okay something related to finances just an example yeah now that thought is bothering you correct mm -hmm. do you leave aside your work and just sit and think of that thought or while you are doing your work only you are meditating on that bad news uh, i think it depends uh before um i used to really marinate in those thoughts um which i thought it was med uh, meditation as well yeah because you are worrying in other words i was asking you do you yeah. sit and only worry or you even while doing your work also you are thinking about it the problem yeah in, in the past yeah that's what i used to, so i'm yeah. i'm really really new um as a born again um but that's what i i used to do but you know i'm i'm still trying to um like today's topic re um, be transformed in my mind to um meditate but i don't think i am quite there yet um which is in a state of constant meditation of the word rather than the situation yeah that's why it is it's not um meditation learning to meditate on the word of god is not something that is going to happen in one day's time it mm. is a process it is a slow process because mm. there are so many things which come our way so many distractions which come our way and mm -hmm. initially we have to build a habit sister like for mm -hmm. example when you are cooking or doing something now worrying comes very easily and yeah. worrying is negative meditation or wrong meditation basically mm -hmm. meditating on all the wrong things unwanted things mm -hmm. jesus told us not to worry about what we we'll eat what we'll drink but still we want to think about those things only correct it's yeah. become a habit for us yeah because yeah. from childhood we have been taught you have to go to school so that you can study well so that you can earn a good salary then you can go to work and with that work you will you know uh, with that salary that work then you have to build a house you have to have this you have to have that that is the knowledge of the world so mm -hmm. what happens as we start growing whatever seeds have been planted from childhood what has become our routine what has become our habit has started influencing our thinking so it is like inbuilt in our system to worry right mm -hmm. but after we come to the word of god the word of god teaches us to change the system change the software download the new software called the word of god which is teaching me to go in the opposite direction not agree with the wor world but agree with the word it is just a process sister like you have to remind yourself like for example when you're getting thoughts of uh, you know worry and you're mm -hmm. cooking mm -hmm. you have to open your mouth and remind yourself the scripture mm -hmm. you have to keep doing it over and over again the more you keep saying that scripture that's why we tell you first confess the word by confessing confession is not for god to hear the prayer confession is to renew my mind so when i say the scripture do not worry about what you will eat 
what you will drink for life is more than cloth and food cloth and shelter just an example so mm. now when i'm saying that verse my attention is going on trusting jesus for my providence mm. and it is not like one time you say it, it you know you you are going to st stop getting negative thoughts no you have to say it over and over again over and over again till your mind learns to focus on the word it is not easy because one time you say it's not like you're going to see any result and the devil is going to again come and tell you give you more negative thoughts so it is again and again again and again you keep on repeatedly you know uh, mm. confessing that scripture till your mind comes to rest and you start resting on god's promises it is a process sister it's like we have to be consistent every day without fail we have to train our mind that's why take scriptures related to your problem if it is related to worry take all the scriptures on worry that speak about do not worry so many places jesus has said do not worry do not fear if it is related to health take scriptures on healing keep saying them over and over again so that your mind stops comes to a place where it is attained rest it stops questioning god's providence praise god thank you so much thank you jesus please so can i share something yes sister go ahead sister yesterday what happened you know one lady had told me to collect something which i wanted so like she told me to come at 8:30 exactly morning 8:30 when your class starts so like i didn't wanted to miss your class because like every day i attend the class and like i said like after attending the class 9:30 i will go to collect but when i went there to collect at 9:30 the that lady like she said no i'm not going to give that thing for you you missed your time then sister like i just shut my mouth i didn't react you know actually like she just raised her voice she said like i told you to come at 8:30 you came at 9:30 i'm not going to give that thing for you i just kept quiet sister i didn't react this only helped me sister by meditating meditating on the word of god you know actually i could react but i just responded in love i just smiled at her i said okay no problem uh, i missed because of the i missed because of zoom class i was attending zoom class so she said no way i'm not going to give you so sister because of this word like i could really respond in love praise god i just wanted to share this thank you jesus praise god beautiful testimony you know another said, yes sister tell because now you're so filled with the word of god now yes. you're not reacting now yes, you're responding sister. according to the word and now it is coming naturally yes. in the beginning there was a lot of labor but yes as you are laboring now you are seeing the result it has become your lifestyle yes sister i wanted to say something sister another thing like i just wanted to ask you like many times like we get we have lot of groups on the whatsapps right so like we get negative news like uh, news of the world or something that and all how to react with that means how to give them the this like not to send for us like once i have told them not to forward me but still they continue in sending those negative news we cannot block them also right now so like yeah. how to tell them sister like not to forward us like many negative news like they go on forwarding in spite of telling them 100 times they go on forwarding sister so how to deal with this you know what i do sister i mm -hmm. don't even open those messages <laughs> ah, okay you directly delete it you just delete yeah. it. i i don't uh, go to touch it itself like i mean in the sense anything related to the thing because it's like you cannot tell a person like you know as i said that person might be in the flesh and that person would want to keep sending the same things again and again so yes. one two times you come to know okay this is something related to the world and you just you know ignore it that's okay. the best way yes yes if okay, you if you tell them also like it is insult like no once if you tell them it's okay they like, again again to tell them like how many times to tell them uh, yeah because yeah. of that that is the thing because if i see from jesus okay 
Jesus okay. had gone to Jairus's daughter's house. Okay, when Jairus's mm -hmm. daughter was dead, and he told Jairus, "Do not fear, only believe." Okay, yes. and that is the place where they all these all people were crying right. in Jairus's house. It, they were all preparing for the funeral, and Jesus heard them. He heard them, but he ignored them. You have to overhear. That means even if you hear, if you see something, you mm -hmm. have to come to a place where you don't internalize what you see. Yes. Because we live in this world. Maybe sister WhatsApp, at least you have an option to not open your, open that message, right? Yes, yes. You have, you have a choice like that. But yes, when yes. you're living in a world where you are constantly with people who are speaking death, can you avoid, uh, you know, that situation in your company? No, you can't avoid. Mm -hmm. yes. There are going to be people. And if I'm going to keep telling, no, you don't speak like this, you don't speak like that, I'm, I'm also not operating in love. I'm also looking, you know, <laughs> I'm also wanting things my way. It might be the right way. But it's all about, you know, um, what to say, what, things I'm going to take inside, what I'm going to not take inside. It's up to me. Yes, and that's sister. why, that's mm -hmm. why you become hardened. That's why the more sensitive you are to God's word, you'll become hardened to those things. Now, yes. even if somebody comes and tells you something, you will not waste your time. For example, somebody might come and tell you something contradicting to the word. Now, instead of going and trying to explain them what is right and what is not right, Holy Spirit tells, don't reply, don't argue, don't waste your time. And listening to his voice gives a lot of peace. Because at the end, what happens is if I'm going to try to, you know, explain to the other person my way, the, again, I'm going in the flesh. My motive is right. But I'm not taking the help of the Holy Spirit. I'm going on my own understanding. Yes. And that's where... It always backfires. Mm -hmm. Every time the Holy Spirit told you, keep your mouth shut. Okay, don't speak anything. And uh, that time you said, no, Holy Spirit, I can handle this. And you went to open your mouth. What happened? It backfired. Okay, I'm sure all of you have experienced this, right? So yes. the key is, you know, asking the Holy Spirit, the wisdom. And most of the times he will... He will give you the right advice. He will tell you to keep your mouth shut. He will tell you when to open your mouth. He'll tell you when to uh, remain quiet. And about these things, again, these messages and all of those things, you have told them once. But even though they keep sending it, you don't bother to open it. That's it. <laughs> Praise That's God. It. Thank you very much. I understood. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, I like to, uh, sister brought that up nicely, even I do get messages and I, I just delete it. I don't forward it. And what comes to my mind at that moment is, this is promoting the uh, kingdom of darkness instead of the kingdom of light. So I said, I will not forward this. I will not be a part of that uh, agent, like the ones who are sending it. Let them do. And one day, and I say, Lord, let your light shine upon them. And I just keep quiet. But I don't tell them I've not forwarded. I don't tell them I've not deleted but immediately I delete, I don't forward. It doesn't um, allow me, the Holy Spirit will not allow me. And I don't feel like, I feel like this is all the kingdom of darkness work going on. And I say, Lord, side by side, let the light of Christ shine. Let the kingdom, your kingdom reign in this earth. Lots of things happening. Sister, very true. Praise God. Praise God. Yes, sister, that's the right thing to do. You don't... Uh promote anything of the kingdom of darkness. But even if somebody comes and even speaks about it, we don't have to react about it. We just have to ignore it and keep on sharing the word of God. Praise God. Thank you. Sister Priya. Yes, Sister. Uh, I just wanted to ask you how to deal with one of the person mm -hmm. who talks very sweet to me. Hmm. I'm, I was not aware 
Hmm. was upset with the family. Hmm. Not to talk much to me. Then you know, yesterday, I was just asking the Lord to bless this person. Hmm. And Lord, you help me and give me the strength to continue to love this person and forgive this person hmm. for whatever this person has against me and whatever hatred and bitterness this person is holding against me. Hmm. Is my prayer right, sister? Yeah. So, see, you you cannot forgive in your own strength. So the no, I need Jesus to love me. And fill me with this love so that I can continue to forgive and love this person. You have, yeah, to fill you with his love. Yeah. But you have already been filled with the love of God. Because Romans 5, 5 says, And hope mm. does not make us ashamed. For God's love has already been poured into our hearts mm. through the Holy Spirit. Yeah. God's grace is already available. It's in your spirit. God's love is already available. Again, it's in your spirit. Yes, sister. So the first thing you have to do, okay, you have to acknowledge yes, that it is not easy to forgive in your own strength. That is the yes, first sister. thing. That I know, sister. You so have when told you're me praying, this last time. Yeah. When you're praying, you say, Lord, yes, it is my desire. I want to let go of that bitterness. I want to yes, let go of that offense. You know, yes, I know it's not yes, the right thing. But I'm not able to do it in my strength and I need your grace. And I thank yes, you, Lord, yes. that you have empowered me with the grace. You have empowered me with the your love. And that yes, love yes. has set me free from this all these negative emotions, unforgiveness. And yes, yes. the same love has filled me with compassion. And I want to pray for this person. As you start yes, saying this over and over again. See, sister, yes, it is not one time, okay? Again, it's renewing yes, your yes, mind with these scriptures. Every yes, time, you know, after you say this once, then the devil is going to show you something else happening with that person. And every yes, time you yes. see it in the flesh, you will be like, how many times I've been praying? How many times I've been, I've been so nice. I'm so considerate, but... This person is doing this. This person is so ungrateful that whatever is happening in the physical will slowly shift your focus onto yourself where you get into self-pity, self-righteousness. That is the time you have to, when you're getting these thoughts, all negative thoughts, again, go back in prayer and say, Lord, it is difficult for me, but I thank you that you have given me the grace. You've given me the love. That love has set me free. That love you know, is motivating me, inspiring me to pray for this person. Every time you get those thoughts, keep saying, keep saying, keep saying. And as you yes. keep saying that, one day you'll notice you don't have anything against that person anymore. Whatever yes, that person says, nothing bothers you. Now you're yes, not sister. reacting, you're responding. Praise God. Yes, sister. Thank you, sister. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So everything in any area of our life, it is all about renewing your mind with the scriptures, with the word of God. Anyone else? Anything before we close? Okay. If there's nothing more, would anyone like to make the Thanksgiving prayer? Yes, the style will make system. Yes, brother, go ahead. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you and we praise you for this time, for this class that you have given us. This time of teaching Thank you very much for your word. Truly, Father, your word is alive. It is active. It has the power to change, to transform, not just our bodies, but our soul and our thinking. Thank you, Lord, 
that you have given us your word, given us your spirit and everything else to live a life of godliness, to live a victorious life and to maintain the victory which you have won for us. Holy Spirit, help us in the areas where we need to make the necessary corrections, the changes. Help us, Lord, to change the way we think and to renew our mind to be aligned according to your word. Thank you, Jesus, that your word is building a new stronghold in our minds right now. And as we make a decision to renew our mind with the truth, this new stronghold built on the foundation of your word in our minds is breaking down all the lies, the deception, wrong knowledge that the enemy has planted in our mind. Thank you, Lord, for each and every participant here who have been listening to your word attentively. And Lord, we will recall what we have learned today, especially when we go to test and trial. We make this prayer in the most holy and mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, brother, for this beautiful prayer. Thank you all for joining in and sharing. See you all tomorrow. Bye. 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 Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you.